We are back with the channel with analysis of the stage-by-stage -stage route of the Giro d'Italia 2023, which was announced this past Monday, 17th of August, in Milan. This 106th edition of the Giro d'Italia will take the riders from Ortona to Rome from the 6th to the 28th of May, over 3,449 kilometers and more than 50,000 meters of ascent. We have eight possible sprint finishes, although six is a more accurate number, and over six stages of more than 200 kilometers and several mountain stages, especially in the third week, with three of them very hard, six summit finishes and climbs like Monte Fondone, Trecime di Lavaredo, Giao, Valparola, the Col du Gran San Bernard or Crans Montana. But there are also 70 kilometers against the clock divided into three stages, including the time trial climb of Monte Lusari before the finish, for the fifth time in Rome. Who will take the Maglia Rosa? Will the likes of Evenepoel, Thomas, Roglic or even Vinge go be there? Will Hindley defend his victory in 2022? And the most important question of all, in how many stages will Rai have broadcasting issues? Let's go with the analysis of the 21 stages of the Giro d'Italia 2023. We start with the Grande Partenza in the Abruzzo region, with an 18km time trial between Fossacetia Marina and Ortona, that runs on a bike path parallel to the sea and with a final climb of 1.5km at 3%. I'm glad it's not a 6 or 8km prologue. The second stage is already 200km long, will take the riders from Teramo to San Salvo and is the first opportunity for the sprinters. It will be ridden by the sea, and the good thing is that there will be a lot of fighting on the two categorized climbs to see who will win the first Magliaturra. The third stage is also over 200 kilometers from Basto to Melfi, leaving Abruzzo heading south, with an interesting finish after two climbs, the Valicos dei Laghi di Monticchio and della Croce, with an average of 6%. The pure sprinters will not be able to hold their own on the peloton, and perhaps it will be the day for an opportunist who is left to do his best on the climbs or the descent before the finish. The fourth stage is not a mountain finish, but almost. It is a constant up and down with several steep climbs and two intermediate passes, the Paso delle Crozzelle and the Valico di Monte Carrozzo, long but not the hardest, although they can be deceiving due to the easier sections. The final ascent of Colle Molella before the slightly downhill finish at Lake Gaseno will make the first differences between the favorites. We won't see a repeat of 1998 with Sule destroying Pantani and company, but some could gain time, like Pozzo Vivo in 2012. And after this possible assault before the men in the GC, we have a stage that could be distinct for a sprint in Salerno, but except for the last 40 kilometers, the course will be very difficult and perhaps the teams of the fastest riders have lost too many riders to cut down the breakaway, which could take the victory. Stage 6 goes from Naples to Naples, but I don't think we'll see a victory like Thomas de Gens in the same city this year, when the breakaway triumphed. The Balico di Ciunzi, although not a bad climb, is very early in the stage and the profile is not as demanding as last year, I predict a sprint finish. And then we reach the first summit finish, the Gran Sasso d'Italia Campo Imperatore. The stage is a long one, 218 km, with Rocarasso in between and the top 14 km climb to Calascio, just before the Gran Sasso which is not as intimidating as the name suggests. 26 km, but only the final 5 km at 8% are worthy. No one will win the Giro on this day, but someone could lose it. Yates beat the rest of the favorites in 2018. Stage 8 is another with plus 200 km and the last 50 have a really interesting profile. The ascent to Monte delle Cesane is sandwiched between a double ascent to a cappuccini, sword, but with ramps reaching 19%. Will any puncher prevail? Will the breakaway emerge victorious, or will any favorites look to bite a bit in the face of possible poor positioning from others? It's time for the second time trial in Emilia Romagna, 33 km completely and utterly flat, to rain for the specialist. If Evenepoel, Roglic or Thomas come along, will they be able to gain 2 minutes on the climbers? After the rest day on the 15th of May, we resume with a stage 10, which has a similar profile to stage 5, but there are more kilometers to organize the pursuit of the breakaway it is very likely to end in a sprint, which is a certain destination of the 11th stage, the longest along with the Grand Sasso 1. The free climbs along the way will not spoil the sprinters' party in Tortona. The 12th stage between Bra and Rivoli will not be for the sprinters, as the Colle Braida, with its final 5 km at 8.4%, completing a climb of 11.5 km is too much for the likes of Bennett or Demar to give to names. Be careful with the descent, which will be a real challenge, and after which there are only 15 km to the finish in Rivoli. Maybe one of the favorites will take a gamble or a rider who doesn't worry the GC will win the stage. 
we arrive at one of the most serious stages of this Giro, the 13th, 208 kilometers, 4,500 meters of accumulated altitude gain, cold and snow, and at the beginning of the incursion into Swiss territory. The first difficulty of the day is the Col du Grand Saint Bernard, the Chima copy of this edition, with more than 30 kilometers of ascent to an altitude of almost 2,500 meters. Its descent is immediately followed by the Croix de Coeur, an unprecedented and very damaging climb, 15 kilometers at 9% average, mostly on dirt as of today. 20 flat kilometers separate us from Crans Montana on a 13 kilometer slope at just over 7% average. It's not the hardest finish in the world, but it's sure to be a stage that could be a spectacle if a brave rider tries it on San Bernard or Kerr. Stage 14 is a transition stage, leaving Switzerland via the Simplon Plus, which, even if it's 20 kilometers long at 6%, and makes the sprinters suffer, there is still plenty of room to recover, organize the chase of the breakaway and compete in another sprint. Stage 15 is a tribute to in Lombardia, with the climbs to Valcava and Selvino and the finish in Bergamo, although they could have added 40 or 50 km more to get close to 250 km. It is also an interesting stage before the second race day and could pose a fight between the GC riders from Valpiana, which is crowned 30 km from the finish although I think that the victory will come from the breakaway of the day, which should be very hotly contested. Another of the greatest stages of this Giro is the 16th, almost 200 kilometers with 5 difficulties and a cumulative ascent of 5,200 meters. The day starts off with 60 kilometers of flat terrain, but after that there is almost no rest. The first climb, the Paso de Santa Barbara, is truly fearsome, 13 kilometers at more than 8%, continuing on to the Paso Bordala, and after the descent, there are two more passes, Matasone and Serrada, with some flat sections that are deceiving. After the descent of Serrada, there is a 10 km flat, and from there, the climb to Monte Fondone, which returns after Ivan Vaso's victory in 2006, although it will not be climbed on the usual side, but on another of 21 km at an average of 6.7%, with two sections at 3%. Will this stage be more decisive than Kranz Montana? After this great effort comes the possible rest on stage 17, the last chance for the sprinters before Rome. They will not miss it. And once again, the high mountains return with a stage of 160 km, with the Paso de la Croceta almost at the start, some 15 km at almost 7% average, followed by a transition zone until the final 30 km, in which some riders will perhaps take their chances on the Forcella Civiana before the final change finish of Coi Valdizoldo. I hope they don't hope to save their strength in view of what is to come in the next two stages, as that finish could do a lot of damage. And speaking of doing damage, we come to the Queen stage, the 19th, the Dolomitic Tapone of this edition. 180 km in which there is no respite with 5,400 meters of positive vertical ascent. Let's hope the broadcast works, because I don't think anyone will want to miss the perfect chain of Campolongo, Valparola with its final 7 km at 8% and the credible Giao with its 10 km and more than 9%. And that's before reaching the final 20 km with the Paso Trecrozzi, the Col Sant'Angelo wall and the finish on the Tricime de Lavaredo, with the last 4 km at 11.7%. And if there is anything left to be decided, the time trial to Monte Lusari, recently asphalted as it used to be a horse track at the end, will do it. The first 11 km are almost flat, the bike change will be made and the climb of 7 km at 12% with a couple of maximums at 22% will be taken. And the Giro 2023 will end after a transfer by plane or road from the north of the country with an 11 km circuit through the states of Rome, passing by the Colosseum, the Roman Forum, the Circus Maximus or the Bath of Caracalla, to finish with a sprint on the road of the Imperial Forum. Let's now come to some conclusions about the route. I like it, but it isn't outstanding. I miss a 240km medium mountain stage, maybe the 15th, the Mini Lombardia, could have been an option, although having 6 stages over 200km makes up for it. It is also possible that the distribution of harder stages is very much reserved for the third week, from Crans Montana onwards, because the Colle Molella or the Gran Sasso in the 4th and 7th stages are not the most complicated clans. The big action, except for the time trials, would be mostly reserved for the third week. Maybe the Songkolan, which was rumored a lot, could have also been included, but we are not going to have all the big climbs every year, let's face it. 
One thing I like a lot is the 70 kilometers of time trial, especially if 52 come before the big mountain stages, as that should, in theory, encourage attacks and some possible aggressive strategy to make up time. Have they done this to attract Evenepoel and some others? Of course, but better this than last year's 26 kilometers of time trial. And as for the grade, I'm not going to give this zero a 10 like Contador, but the route gets a 7.5 IB. What do you think of the route? Let me know in the comments. Here ends this analysis of the 21 stages of the next Giro d'Italia, an edition with an interesting route and that can offer a good battle at the end, but everything will depend on the attitude of those who make the race. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. See you next time!